Hi, my good name is Anisia Kabue. I am a filmmaker, producer and director, and I'm a millennial on the move. I produced and directed the film Call Me, I'm Waiting. Uh, I participated in the Allianz Fonsez smartphone film competition and I was the first prize winner. Good thing. I think of myself as an entertainer, so I chose filmmaking so that I can be able to reach a wide audience and make them have a nice time and forget all about their troubles. So filmmaking uh, entails telling a story from the beginning to the end. You might focus on one character, their struggles, their achievements, their wants and their needs. And it's just the joy of seeing them pursuing their goal at the end of the day that makes uh, the complete story. Um, so Call Me, I'm Waiting is a short film. It's a comedy film, comedy of errors, stroke manners. It's a short film about Jackie, who is waiting for a call back from a bank that she's expecting a loan to be approved. Um, Jackie is also in a lot of debt. She has debts from loan sharks, friends, family. She's in trouble. And so this one call is the one that's going to help her solve all her problems. Uh, the process of making the film was quite tedious because I worked with non-filmmakers and I had to think a lot for my team <laughs> while producing the project because I was also the actor and the producer, the director, the writer. So it was quite tedious, but I had an awesome team. Uh, at least my camera person knew one, two, three things about it. So as much as it was tedious, the fact that they were curious and they wanted to learn more made it very interesting while on set. I don't think I'm sure about the hospital which I was born at, but I remember growing up I was a very curious and playful child. And I even started acting as early as six years old. I remember my first show at Kenya National Theatre. I was six years old and I only had one line, I smell a rat here. And I discovered early that I would be in the entertainment industry and it was just up to me to pursue the goal. So throughout primary school, high school, I participated uh, in music festivals, drama festivals. And then when I finished high school, I joined Kenya Institute of Mass Communication and I pursued theater arts and film technology. Now the good thing about KMC is that they also have a very active drama club. So I participated there. But funny thing, in that club, I used to be a dancer. I didn't act or direct things. I used to be a dancer there. So after finishing KMC, I went to Kenyatta University. I pursued theater arts and film technology there. And I did a lot of theater and also film there. So. I think that's why I got the push now to, because I knew after that I'm going fully to the field. So I got the push to do so much. And I started do, working on my own personal projects while I was in KU. So my first short film I remember was called Fading Away. And I also participated in the Kenya Film Commission's mobile film competition and I won the Jury's Choice Award. That was my first film and I won an award for it. Now for my latest film, Call Me Awaiting, uh, was the smartphone film competition by Allianz Fonsez and I got the first prize. This is the first prize I've actually won. Yeah, it's been a long, long journey and I, I think I'm also still interested in other entertainment platforms like music, We'll see, we'll see. There's a lot in, <laughs> in the works at the moment. Um, like I said, growing up I was a very curious, playful kid. I think my parents identified early enough that I was going to be in the entertainment industry. Now the problem was, 
they don't take entertainment as a full-time job someone can do. They don't see it as a serious business venture. So when I said that I want to pursue this fully, uh, it wasn't taken seriously like I wanted it to. And it took a lot of proving myself so that my parents can allow me to do this. And I think it's important for parents to support what children uh, are interested in earlier on because uh, it's, you know, it, there's a difference when you're doing something to prove a point and when you're doing something because you're good at it and you want to excel at it. I come from a very interesting family. We have very different personalities. I don't think any of my parents is interested in arts. So I think that that's why they found it very weird that I want to take this route. Uh, my siblings, we, we have four children and a, grand, a grandson. Um, my sisters, I think they enjoy entertainment, not the creating side. I think they enjoy entertainment. I think my brother has an entertainment niche, Kiplani, but I don't think it's fully there. Like mine clearly shows from the beginning. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a very interesting family. I've had an interesting journey in the filmmaking industry, and I'll tell you all about it when we come back from this short break. Welcome back. This is Millennial on the Move. My good name is Anisia Kabue. The theme for the Allianz Foncés smartphone film competition was Comedy of Errors from Comedy of Manners and was an interesting uh, genre because I don't think of myself as a funny person or as a comedian. And I remember immediately I saw the theme, my, the first thought was um, Mr. Bean or Charlie Chaplin. And I knew Mr. Bean would not be easy, especially because I was working with a zero budget. And Mr. Bean has a very animated face. So that uh, was not going to happen. So I settled for Charlie Chaplin. And I remember when, before I started scripting, I, I watched a lot of Charlie Chaplin, trying to understand where the manners and the errors come in. So when I was writing my script, I would literally try and put plot points on my story while watching Charlie Chaplin to make sure that my, my story matches the theme. And I remember telling myself, even if I don't win, I think I've challenged myself because I don't think of myself as a comedian or I would ever do comedy. I think I, I would never have done comedy were it not for this competition. So in my mind, I was doing this for myself. The fact that I got nominated was enough for me. That was a win for me. And I remember when we were sitting in the hall, when they were playing my film and I would hear the audience reaction. They were like, oh, wow, the highs and the lows, the moments to laugh at. And I remember I have actually achieved what I wanted to. So when they called us and announced that we were winners, I was overjoyed because I had already won for me. So this was like a stamp to show me that I'm good at it, so I'm going to keep doing it. So again, this was a zero budget production. We were filming using a phone. We did have lights, we were using a torch. <laughs> And we were lucky enough we were not recording audio, so we got away with a lot of things. But funny thing, when I was writing my script, it had dialogue, so that when we are acting, we don't look weird. Don't know if you get me. Watch the film, you get it. So when you're filming with a phone, uh, one of the challenges is that when you're trying to frame your film, uh, you, you can't get a perfect either close-up or a medium shot. It's mostly all long shots. So when you're trying to get those tight shots, it gets a little tedious. But um, we tried. 
we managed. Another thing when it comes to lighting, like I said, we were using a torch to light for the film. So we didn't have much control. And then even the intensity wasn't as much just by learning one to three things that you can apply and get away with them. So winning the first prize competition, uh, we got a trophy for the competition and we also won 100,000 Kenya shillings. We intend to invest some of the money uh, into buying more equipment and one to three things uh, that go into production. And the rest of the money, we have to say thank you to the body that did this thing. Um, I look up to award-winning filmmakers, David Fincher, Ave Duvernay, Greta Garwig, especially Greta Garwig. I think when I venture into feature films, I think my style would be most likely close to Greta Garwig's. I love the way she tells her story, how she... She captures emotion and how she evokes emotion. And I love, I love, I love her ways of storytelling. Locally in Kenya, I think I admire people like Api Matere. She's, she's, she's a boss producer. If I want to be anything, I want to be anything like her. I also like how Eugene Bogwa is business-minded. I love his approach when he, he's creating content. And those are the two people that I really look up to. Well, due to lack of finances, I tend to work with my friends a lot. And uh, people tend to mix pleasure with business and they don't want to take you seriously when, you, when you're trying to give them direction or anything, you know, because you're just a friend to them. And it has given me character development. Hey, hey, hey. Working with friends is, uh, is not as easy. But I've learned to be very strict. When we are when we are working, we are working. When you're playing, when you're playing. Uh, when you're playing, we're playing. When you're having fun, we're having fun. But uh, working with friends and people who are very close to you, and especially with a zero budget, they know at the end of the day you're not going to pay them, is very tricky. You have to be, because you can also be strict. But at the end of the day, when they know that you are not paying them, they won't even care. And you, this is a passion project, and you want to get things done at the end of the day. It's, it's, it's one of the toughest lessons I have learned. Um, another lesson, when I was starting my projects, I didn't focus on the business side of it. I didn't focus on making money. I was just creating content for the sake of creating content. And I think I spent a lot of time doing, I'd call it nothing, uh, because at the end of the day, you have to understand if you're doing this full time, you want to make money out of it. So I'd, I wish when I was starting up, I would focus on the business side of entertainment. I watch a lot of films, movies, series. There's no time I'm not watching. Even when I'm working sometimes, oh my God, my voice is good to hear this. Sometimes when I'm working, I'm literally watching something behind Sometimes even I don't watch, like I, I can read a whole script instead of watching a movie. And I think it has given me my, what would I call it? My style, yeah. I watch a lot of films and when I, before I work on a project, I watch a lot of behind the scenes because if I want to achieve A, B, C, D, I will watch a behind the scenes for the A, B, C, D that I want to achieve. And also I will watch more so that I can see if I can implement some things that are not in, the, in my vision, so that I can implement them in my productions. Ooh, in five to 10 years, wow. Even when I think about it, I, I'm like, guy, nimimi nafikiria vitu kuba ivo. I, first of all, I've never made a feature film. That is definitely in the plans. I want to get into the entertainment industry na ubaya. Yes, I want, I want to be in front of the camera, I want to be behind the camera. I want to focus on content marketing, especially in Kenya. I don't think we are there yet. I, I see we are doing something, but uh, compared to what other countries are doing, our competitors, I think we have a long way to go. So in five to 10 years, I want to focus on 
content marketing and distribution. Yes. I also am eyeing being a DJ. I'm training. <laughs> I, I think I'm an all round entertainer. So, yeah, five to ten years, Anissa Kabu will be a big name. I think uh, millennials need to understand that it's okay to start from where you are with what you have. Because sometimes we tend to wait until we get the big cameras, until we get the best lighting, until we get uh, the best equipment. But um, it, 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 the wait takes too long and when you're starting with what you have, there are lessons that you learn so that by the time you're getting the big equipment, you get to get a, you, you, you have like a good head start because you've already learned the lessons along the way. So I think millennials should just accept that sometimes you just have to start from where you are. I, still, I think the government is still struggling to believe that Kenya can, uh, the entertainment industry can help improve the economy. And uh, Nigeria, for instance, South Africa, for instance, they have good economy uh, input from the entertainment industry. And I think it's about time the government to stop giving us false promises and believe in us so that we can also contribute financially to the development of Kenya. We are ready. We can do this. Trust us. Believe us. Mental health is a very sensitive issue and I'm happy that people are creating awareness around it. I'd say for me, how I take care of my mental health, um, if you cost my peace, I'll take my leave. I'm just quoting Adekule right here. But yeah, if you cost my peace, I'll take my leave. But when it comes uh, when it comes to something like a passion project, let's say you are into filmmaking and things are not coming or things are not working the way you want them to, it's advisable to take a break, to breathe, uh, and work around what you see. It's not working, and it might take so long. So I'd advise anybody who is going through that stage to just be patient. And, all, and be very experimental. If you see something is not working, try something else until you find something that works. It may not be something to your liking. Like I said, I've never been a comedian. I've never produced a comedy. This was outside my comfort zone, but I pushed myself and I didn't know it would work. So experiment, be open-minded, see what is working, see what's not working. Accept your flaws and your failures because uh, if you're trying so hard to be perfect, then, then uh, your mental health will not be okay because I don't believe there's a perfect person. So accept your flaws and then work around it so that you can be okay, stable in your head when you're doing your thing. One thing people don't know about me is that if I wasn't a filmmaker, I'd be a musician. If I was a bird, I would be the falcon. I want to fly highest and farthest without uh, restrictions such as visa, money, passport, whatnot. I want to be all over the world. I go by the name Anisia Kabwe on all social media platforms. You can find my films on, especially call me, I'm waiting and find it on Alliance Francais YouTube channel. You're going to find a lot more on Backbench Entertainment that is coming soon. A lot of things are in the works. I'm ready to entertain you, so sit back, let me entertain you. Shout out to my parents uh, for supporting me this far. Thank you for your support. I wouldn't be here without you. Thank you to Humble Team Entertainment, uh, DJ BZB, DJ Monerali, Kenny, Charlene, Sifi. Uh, thank you so much for your support so far. At away from Lee, thank you so much. Uh, I wouldn't have made call me I'm waiting without you guys. Thank you for trusting me and believing in me and giving me your time, your effort and anything that you contributed to making call me I'm waiting forever grateful. Mm -hmm. 
I am wishing everyone a joyous holiday. Meet with family, meet with friends. Go through your ear, analyze where you went wrong and focus on where you're going to go right next year. But this is the season to just let go and enjoy how far you've come. You've made it this far, so I'm proud of you. So go and enjoy yourself. So Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.